In February of 2019, Time Magazine published an article entitled, Artificial Intelligence Has a Problem with Gender and Racial Bias. Here's how to solve it. This was written by a computer scientist named Joy Guolamwini. She is a Black American and founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, which sounds very cool. In her article, she talks about how AI developed by tech giants such as IBM, Microsoft, and Amazon failed terribly at predicting gender in pictures of women and people of color. So, what is the big deal with this problem? Let's imagine that law enforcement agencies want to develop an AI that looks at live video footage and calculates the likelihood that someone is a criminal based on their face. What if this AI saw you standing in line at the bank and calculated that you are not just a criminal, but most likely a violent criminal? When it calls the police, the whole SWAT team shows up. Now, would you want this to happen to you? Of course not. The same bias that makes law enforcement AI dangerous also makes medical AI dangerous. You see, medical AI predicts how much pain medication you need, how much oxygen you need, what life-saving drugs you need, and what surgical procedures you need. If it is biased, you and your loved ones will suffer more and die sooner. Hi, my name is Dr. Dave Nguyen. I'm the CEO of Brain Scanology. I'm a computational biologist, and for that, I was a cancer biologist. I got my PhD from UC Berkeley, and I invented an algorithm that can measure shapes in ways that area and volume cannot. It's called the LCPC transform, and it's the core algorithm of brain technology software. As someone who studies and creates pattern recognition algorithms, I come to realize that the problem of racial and gender bias in data science is not in the algorithms, but in how we use the algorithms. But the main reason why I feel passionately about racial and gender bias in AI is because I grew up in a low-income family of immigrants. Life was hard, and the label of being underprivileged was an understatement. But I was fortunate to have great parents, great teachers, and great mentors, and so I'm doing my part to pass things forward. The topic of this presentation is reducing racial bias in medical artificial intelligence. There are four main points that I want you to walk away with. After describing them, I will discuss each in more detail so that you are equipped with the knowledge to ask the right questions. So let's begin. Point number one, artificial intelligence or AI is only as smart as the data that you feed it. If you feed it biased training data, then it makes biased predictions. Point number two, each race of people has genetics that affect how symptoms of disease manifest, but AI has no clue about this unless we teach it. Point number three, do not, not interpret point number two to mean that certain races are genetically inferior because genetics cannot tell us that. Point number four, you, the listener, the one who's telling yourself right now, you're not a scientist, you're not an engineer, yes, you, you can do something to reduce the problem of data bias by asking your local and regional lawmakers what they are doing about the problem. So now that I've outlined the four main points, let's dig into each. Starting with point number one, artificial intelligence is only as smart as the data that you feed it. You see, AI requires its creator to define something called ground truth. For example, if you want to train AI to recognize dog versus cats, you have to give it a batch of images containing only dogs and a batch of images containing only cats. These batches of images are called ground truth categories. And it's what the AI studies to learn what is true. The same applies to training AI to detect lungs that are healthy or infected by COVID. You need to provide pictures of healthy lungs as ground truth and then pictures of infected lungs as ground truth. But what if? What if a disease affects males differently than it does females? What if a disease causes Black people to have heart attacks, but white people to have strokes? If you train AI, right, with data only from patients who are white and male, then it will misdiagnose patients who are not white and not male. Misdiagnosis means you will suffer more and die sooner. All of this simply because of your race. So racial bias in medical AI is going to be a huge problem. AI is the future of healthcare because we, there aren't enough doctors and nurses out there. So if we don't do something about the problem, it's only gonna get worse. Firstly, it is an ethical problem because people will be harmed. Secondly, it's a justice problem 
because entire groups of people will be discriminated against. And lastly, it's an economic problem because the US healthcare system is going to be flooded beyond its capacity. By the year 2060, two thirds of the US population will be people of color. And if our best AI is racist, then it will harm the US economy by, with misdiagnoses that render people unable to live and work. Let's now talk about point number two, which is that each race of people has genetics that affect how symptoms of disease manifest. But AI has no clue about this unless we teach it. For example, people, uh, some people get disease earlier in life than others. Latin Americans get dementia eight years sooner than non-Hispanic white Americans. This means that they have eight years fewer to plan and provide for their families before dementia kicks in and ruins their ability to feed their families. In this case, don't you think AI should be trained to detect dementia sooner in Latinx people? Take Alzheimer's disease, for example. 60% right? of Alzheimer's patients in the US are female, but the vast majority of research participants in Alzheimer's studies are male. So not only is racial bias a problem in medical AI, so is gender bias. Is there a reason why grandma deserves better treatment or grandpa deserves better treatment than grandma? Let's now talk about point number three. Right, that is, do not interpret point number two to mean that certain races are genetically inferior because genetics cannot tell us that. This is a very important point I want to uh, bring across. We know from research on identical twins that when they live in different environments, that affects their biology differently, even though they have the same DNA. We also know this from studies of animals that subjected genetically identical animals to different living conditions. Your value as a person, your intellectual potential, and your career potential are too complicated for genetics to predict in any meaningful way at the level of race. Now, some people do inherit mutations that cause disabilities, but that has little to do with the potential of an entire race of people. On this subject, actually, I'm formulating a concept called heritable non-genetic information, abbreviated as HNI, but I like to pronounce it as honey. So I can say things like, the answer to this problem lies in the honey. Okay, so HNI or honey is about a biological code that you inherit just like DNA, but it's not stored in DNA. Turns out there are many biological codes that can be inherited, but they are based on 2D and 3D shapes as opposed to sequences uh, in DNA. So the next time someone tries to build your race because of genetics, you can ask them about the environmental influences on genetics. And you can ask, is it really that simple, honey? Lastly, let's talk about point number four. You, the listener, can do something to reduce the problem of data bias by asking your local and regional lawmakers what they are doing about the problem. You see, lawmakers have to deal with many problems that fight for their attention. Homelessness, the economy, fixing potholes in the road, you name it. So if you don't voice your concerns about data bias and medical AI, then they won't know that's important to you. I will explain what you can do about this problem at the community level, right, at the city and state level, and lastly, at the federal level. So you can walk away with concrete steps that you can take to help solve this problem. So what can you do at the community level? Two things. First, you can talk to your religious community, right, and your social community about participating in medical research studies. Some studies will actually pay you for your participation, and these studies are often coordinated at nearby hospitals and medical schools. Secondly, gather people in your community and create a committee that will learn about the best practices of participating in medical research, right? Your community needs you, needs leaders to step up to learn and to teach others. And this is very intimidating because there have been abuses in the past uh, that caused people to distrust medical research, and that's very valid. Uh, but there's too much at stake for us to resign to our fears, right? We need to collectively uh, work together in order to prevent this major problem, right, from hitting us in the future. Now let's talk about what we can do at the city and state level. You can contact your mayor, your city council, and your state legislators. Tell them to create plans to incentivize medical schools and research centers to collect diverse patient data when they do research. This reward incentive, or these reward incentives, can be in the form of tax breaks or tax exemptions. Another thing you do at the city and state level is join research advocacy organizations and attend their events. At those events, you'll meet local researchers, 
And you can ask them questions of what they are doing right, against data bias in their research. You see, both lawmakers and scientists need to hear a collective concern from society about this problem called data bias. If they don't hear about it, they won't do anything about it because too many things fight for their attention every day. Lastly, let's talk about what you can do at the federal level. You can contact your representative in Congress and your senator because Congress controls the annual budget of the National Institutes of Health, right? Otherwise known as the NIH, right? The NIH funds a lot of medical research at universities. Congress is able to create laws requiring the collection of diverse patient data in medical studies. Congress is able to create penalties against university labs that don't follow funding rules that come along with the grant funding, right? So uh, at the city and state level, they can create positive incentives, right? But at the federal level, they can actually create uh, penalties. Okay? And all of this is going to be important uh, to cause a major change in how data is collected, uh, the data that's used to train you know, medical AI. So to summarize point number four, change needs to come from the top. Major shifts in behavior in order for them to happen has to come from the people who control the research funding, right? Not necessarily people who do the research, but the people who control the research funding. So now that we are at the end of this presentation, I want to reiterate the four main points that you should take away. One, AI is only as smart as the data that you feed it. Two, each race of people has genetics that affect how symptoms of disease manifest, but AI has no clue unless you teach it. Three, genetics cannot determine right, whether one race is inferior to another. So don't let people bully you into believing that. And lastly, four, you, the listener, can do something to reduce data bias by consistently asking your local and regional lawmakers what they are doing about the growing problem. There's a phrase that uh, I have to think about, that is, awareness doesn't change anything, but nothing changes until people are aware. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to wish you a happy new year that is full of joy and success. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me via email. My address is dave, D-A-V-E, at brainscanology.com.